Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be giving my NBA DraftKings picks for Tuesday, December 12th. Uh, we got a 7 game slate on this Tuesday. And before we get started looking at this slate, make sure you guys drop a like on the video. I would really appreciate it. And if you are new to the channel, this is your first time watching a video on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do upload NBA content daily. I make NFL videos as well every week. So you're going to want to make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on notifications uh, so that way you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. Um, but yeah, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Looking at this seven-game slate, uh, looking at point guards that we want to target today. All right, so point guard up top of this position. we got Ben Simmons here at 9,800 going up against the Timberwolves. I uh, doubt I'm going to be on Ben Simmons today. He's probably going to have to see Jimmy Butler defense. Butler is a solid defender. That's definitely a tough spot for Simmons. Um, right now, as I am recording this video on Monday night, uh, Joel Embiid is questionable today. Obviously, if Embiid sits, that's an upgrade for Simmons. We'll definitely have to look into him more if Embiid is out. But I think Embiid's going to play today. That does hurt Simmons. And in a tough matchup where he's probably going to see Jimmy Butler defense, I don't know if I want to pet for Simmons. Just don't think I want to pet for point guard at all today. I like some of these options like in this uh, mid-tier, this 6K, 5K range. Really like Lonzo Ball today at 6,600. I think he is a guy I have a ton of interest in in this mid-tier point guard. Uh, playing against the Knicks in Madison Square Garden. Uh, this will be Lonzo Ball, sort of, where he gets to show uh, what kind of player he is. Going to the Madison Square Garden, we know that's the that's the arena where all the stars come out, show what they're really made of. So this is kind of a big game for Lonzo Ball. It is a great matchup. The Knicks are not good defensively against the point guard. Really like Lonzo Ball today in tournaments. We know the kind of upside this guy has. He has triple-double upside. We saw it against the Sixers. Uh, 46 DraftKings points, 10 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, 4 blocks, 3 steals, 46 DraftKings points. I uh, played 38 minutes in that game. We know the kind of upside Lonzo has. He's obviously sort of a riskier play, so I don't know if I want to go there in cash games. But for tournaments today, really like Lonzo Ball. I feel like this is a game where he goes off and gets a triple-double possibly. Or if he doesn't get a triple-double, I feel like he's going to put up at least like uh, 35, 40 DraftKings points and return value on the salary, possibly return 6 to 7x. Really like Lonzo Ball today in tournaments in that mid-tier. Definitely a guy I have, I have my interest in at 6,600. We do have options that are a little bit cheaper than Lonzo Ball that we can target. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie in a good spot at 6,100. A uh, good matchup against Washington. Dinwiddie does seem a little bit too cheap today, uh, especially just how he's performed lately his last four games. 42, 29, 20, 33 jackings points. Obviously that 20 uh, where he put up against OKC was not good, but he did get in foul trouble in that game. He only played 19 minutes, had five fouls. Uh, when Dinwiddie gets his full minutes with Russell out, he's been playing really well this year and at just 6,100. You need about 30, 35 DK points from him to return value. Uh, he's been doing that pretty much every game this year with D'Angelo Russell out when he's got his full minutes. So I do like Spencer Dinwiddie at 6,100. I think if you're looking for a cash game play in that mid-tier, I think he makes a lot more sense than Lonzo Ball is because Ball is a lot more inconsistent. But Ball does have a ton of upside in this spot. Really like him for GPPs. But definitely think you can go to Dinwiddie in cash games today. Uh, and then 5K range, a couple options here that I think we can target. Uh, Reggie Jackson in a really good matchup today, playing at home against Denver. We know the Nuggets are not very good defensively against the point guard. This is a great matchup for uh, Reggie Jackson. He's sort of been inconsistent lately, though. Don't know if I want to go there in cash games. I think you can go to Dinwiddie for just 200 more for cash. But for tournaments, I feel like this is one of those games where Reggie Jackson is going to put up like 35, close to 40 DraftKings points in a great matchup against the Nuggets. Jackson does have potential to return 6, 7x on this price tag. Put up 38 DraftKings points against San Antonio, 34 against Phoenix, 33 against Boston. Uh, so Jackson definitely has potential to return 6x, which would be 36 DraftKings points. I think Jackson can get to there or can get to that mark today. I really like him in tournaments at 5,900. Great matchup against the Nuggets, a bad team against point guards. I think Jackson makes plenty of sense uh, at his price tag. And then looking for value plays at point guard, 5K and under. Not a ton of value plays I see here that I'm really in love with. Definitely hope some value opens up as the day goes on because uh, there aren't a, a lot of value plays I really like. Do have uh, We do have Jarrett Jack here. I think he is in consideration at 4,500 in a matchup against the Lakers. A uh, really good matchup. We know the Lakers are not good defensively against the point guard. They play at a very fast pace. And as of late, uh, Jarrett Jack has been seeing pretty solid minutes, been pretty consistent when it comes to minutes. 27, 28, and 26 minutes in those last three games. 33, 16, and 27 DraftKings points. I um, mean, he's just 4,500 today. For him to return value on that salary, gonna need about 22, 23 DK points. And in a really good matchup against the Lakers, I would say it's likely that Jarrett Jack gets there if he plays his full run of 25 or more minutes. Uh, I think Jack can get you 
enough points to return value on the salary. Um, so I think he's a value play we can target at 4,500. Do have potential value with the Spurs uh, point guards if Tony, Tony Parker is out today, if he is out. He's listed as questionable right now because he rested, I believe, on Saturday. If Parker somehow misses this game again, that will obviously open up the value plays of Patty Mills and Deontay Murray. But right now, I think that's all the point guard value I'm seeing today. You got George Hill here at 4K if you want to go to him against the Suns. Uh, but George Hill's just been so inconsistent this year. You just look in his last four games, he's put up 22, 8, 27, and 18 DraftKings points. And the minutes have been insanely inconsistent. 26, 18, 30, 18 minutes last four games. Uh, so George Hill, definitely a tournament play, but this is a really good matchup against the Suns. They are not good defensively against the point guard. They do play at a fast pace. George Hill is very cheap today, uh, but like I said, he's been really incons inconsistent. If you want more of a safer point guard option for cheap, I'd probably go to Jerry Jack at 4500 uh, if I did want to go that cheap. But yeah, guys, that's what I'm seeing at point guard today. Not a lot of value plays I'm seeing here the night before. I think the mid-tier is where we want to go. Good options here like Reggie Jackson, Spencer Dinwiddie, Lonzo Ball, I think even Jeff T could be an option at 6500 These are probably the guys I'm targeting. Don't know if I'm going to be paying up here. I don't know if I want to pay up for Simmons on this slate. John Wall's questionable, so I don't know if we're going to be able to go to him. If he plays, he'll probably be on a minutes restriction anyway. And I feel like Dennis Schroeder is a little bit overpriced. So the point guard options I really like uh, today are the, in that mid-tier with Ball, Teague, Dinwiddie, Reggie Jackson. Those are the guys that really catch my eye. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to shooting guard. All right, so up top of this position, a shooting guard. We've got Bradley Beal here leading the pack today at 8,600 going up against the Nets. Uh, I don't think Bradley Beal is a guy I want to pay for at all today. With an $8,600 price tag, we're going to need at least 44, 45 DK points for him to return value on the salary. Obviously, it's possible that he does that against Brooklyn. But if John Wall does come back today, I don't think there's any chance I'm playing Bradley Beal at 8,600. Maybe for tournaments, if Wall is out again, we could consider him. Uh, for cash games, I don't think it's very likely he gets like 45 today. Obviously, he has the upside to do that, but I don't know if I can reason, uh, reasonably project Bradley Beal for like 45, 46, which is what we would need for him at this price tag. I think if you want to pay for shooting guard, it makes a lot more sense uh, just to go $600 less and pay up for Jimmy Butler uh, going up against the Sixers. Obviously, he's probably going to see a tough defensive matchup with Robert Covington. I would imagine Covington's going to guard Jimmy Butler, but Jimmy Butler's been playing really well lately. Just in his last four games, he's hit value in four straight games. 53, 48, 40, and 44 drafting points in the in his last four games. And in a game that should be competitive, should probably be high scoring. Really like Jimmy Butler here as an option we can pay up for. I think I'd prefer him over Bradley Beal. Uh, maybe if John Wall remains out today, then we could go to Beal. But I think Wall's going to be back. I think yeah, I expect him to be back today, which really hurts Bradley Beal. I think if I'm paying up for shooting guard, I'd go to Jimmy Butler at 8K. And then looking for mid-tier options that we can target at shooting guard. I don't like a lot of these 6K options. Doubt I'm going to be on Gary Harris at 6700 or Brandon Ingram at that same price. Don't think I want to pay up for Barton. I think if I'm paying up at shooting guard, I just go to the uh, go to up, go up to Jimmy Butler. In this 5K price range, we do have some options here that we can target. At 5500, I think Contavious Caldwell Pope uh, is in a really good spot today, going up against the Knicks. They are not that good defensively against the shooting guard. Really good matchup for KCP. Uh, and in his last three games, he's been pretty consistent. Uh, he's been getting close to value, 26, 25, 24 DraftKings points in his last three games. At 5,500, I'd say we need about uh, 26, 27, 28 DK points, somewhere around that range, for him to return value on the salary. And like I said, in his last three games, he's been getting close to that. This is definitely a good matchup for KCP, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he does return value on the salary. If KCP gets 30-plus, would not surprise me today. Uh, so I do like him in that mid-tier shooting guard. I think this is probably where we're going to go. Uh, shooting guard today unless we pay up for pay up for a guy like Jimmy Butler there are options here like uh, KCP I think Tari and Prince going up against the Cavs uh, I talked about this when I've talked about Prince earlier versus the Cavs he's probably going to have to play plenty of minutes to guard LeBron Prince is one of the better defenders that Atlanta has uh, and Prince has been playing really well lately in his last three games uh, the minutes have been up for Prince 36 33 and 39 minutes in the last three games 29, 28, 20, or 29, 28, and 33 DraftKings points. And like I said, going up against Cleveland, Tarion Prince is going to have to guard LeBron. He is a very good defender, Prince is. So he's probably going to have to play plenty of minutes. I think he makes plenty of sense at 5,400 as a mid-tier option at shooting guard. I think it's going to be hard to decide between like KCP, Tarion Prince, or a guy like J.J. Redick against the Timberwolves. Definitely a good spot for J.J. Redick. Uh, like I said earlier, I expect Jimmy Butler to guard Ben Simmons. Uh, so that should leave... 
Jeff Teague on uh, J.J. Redick, and that is a good matchup for Redick. And we know Redick has a ton of upside to return 6, possibly even 7x on this price tag, especially if he's making his shots like he was against the Pelicans, put up 37 DraftKings points in that game, 30 DraftKings points against the Suns, 28 against Cleveland. And if he's going to see Jeff Teague defense, which I imagine he's going to, definitely like J.J. Redick as well in that mid-tier. I think if I'm choosing between KCP, Redick, and uh, Tarion Prince, as of now, I think Prince might be my favorite at 5,400. If I had to rank these three, I think I'd go Prince, Redick, and then KCP. Uh, but I feel like all these good or all these guys in this mid-tier shooting guard are really good options today. As well as Kent Bazemore at 5,300, I think Kent Bazemore, another mid-tier option we can target if we need to go to that uh, price range. I know he's had some pretty good games this year against Cleveland, so he could also be an option at 5,300. I usually like to go to J.J. Barea as a value play, but uh, his price tag has really risen with Dennis Smith Jr. expected to be out for this game. Barea is now up to 5100 Don't know if I want to go to him uh, at that price tag with the price tag rise. We'll talk about Yogi Ferrell in a second, but I think Yogi Ferrell's the value play you want from Dallas with DSJ out. Uh, so doubt I'm going to be on Barea. Looking for value plays at shooting guard, uh, 5K and under that we can target. If you want to tackle with the Phoenix uh, shooting guard, you can go to Josh Jackson or a guy like uh, Troy Daniels with Devin Booker out. Uh, but I don't think I want to go to those guys. I think the shooting guard value play today is Yogi Ferrell at 3800 I uh, didn't see a price tag rise at all with DSJ out. And I believe he has started the last two games with uh, Dennis Smith Jr. out. And in those two games, he's played 23 and 33 minutes. And the only reason he played 23 minutes against Milwaukee was because uh, he got into foul trouble in that game. But in his last two games with uh, Smith Jr. out, he's put up 14 and 24 DraftKings points. And at just 3800 to return 6x on this price tag, we're only going to need 24 DraftKings points from him. And I think it's very likely that he gets there with Smith Jr. out. Farrell did get the start with uh, DSJ out, like I said. A uh, really good value option, either point guard or shooting guard. I think he's going to be pretty popular today, but definitely makes sense. Should see plenty of minutes and should not have a problem at all returning value on the salary. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's what I'm seeing at shooting guard today. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some small forwards. All right, so at small forward today, up top of this position, we got LeBron here, 11-8, going up against the Hawks. I uh, don't know if I'm, Le if I'm going to be paying up for LeBron today. Uh, right now, as I'm recording this video on Monday night, we don't have any news about Kevin Love. He did miss uh, one of their games. I believe it was Saturday. Kevin Love sat out for that game. And I haven't seen any news, like if Love's questionable or not, if he's going to play. If he is out, we're definitely going to want to consider LeBron. If Love plays, I don't know if I'm going to pay 11-8 for LeBron today, especially in a game that could be a blowout. Uh, we know LeBron, we want to play LeBron when he's going to be in cl uh, close, competitive games. If you just look in his last three games, all three of those games were competitive against the Sixers, against the Pacers, and against the Kings. Uh, and he put up 69, 60, and 74 DraftKings points in those games. Obviously, this game could get ugly, but if Kevin Love is out today, I think the blowout potential does lessen a bit. And this is a really good spot for LeBron, so uh, definitely a guy we're going to have to track throughout the day. If Love is out, I think LeBron obviously becomes one of the top studs on the slate, but you can always pay up for LeBron. really doesn't matter who the matchup is or who's going to be guarding him. LeBron can get the job done pretty much any day. But there are some other expensive options today that we can consider to where we don't have to force LeBron in. But like I said, he's a good option, especially if Love is out. But looking for other options at small forward that we can target. Um, it looks like Kawhi Leonard's going to make his debut today for the Spurs. He's really cheap at 7300 but I can already tell you Kawhi Leonard's going to be on a minutes restriction. He is probable for this game, but like I said, Kawhi's probably going only, gonna to only play like 20-25 minutes, if that. It's been a while since Kawhi has actually played in a uh, basketball game, so I'm probably not going to go there, even at 7300 This is a cheap price tag for Kawhi. We know if he's his normal self, if he's not coming off injury, Kawhi was like 8 9 k last year, so 7300 is cheap, but like I said, I'm expecting him to be on a minutes limit. If he's not on a minutes limit, obviously Kawhi is a great play today, but I feel like he is going to be restricted, so I think, I think I'll stay away from him. We do have other options in this mid here that we can target. Uh, I think T.J. Warren at 6,900, really good option in this mid-tier. Uh, with, with Devin Booker out for like the next two to three weeks, T.J. Warren's just going to be a usage monster. He's going to take a ton of shots. He's going to be playing a ton of minutes. Just look at his last two games. Played 44 minutes against Washington, 31 against the Spurs, 34 and 30 DraftKings points. This is obviously a good matchup against Sacramento. They are not a good defensive team. They do play at a very slow pace, but like I said, they're bad defensively. This is a good spot for Warren. And at 6,900, we're going to need about 35 DK points from him to return value on this salary. Uh, I think if this game stays close, which it pretty, uh, I think it pretty much should, both of these teams are pretty bad. I think this game should be competitive. Definitely like TJ Warren 
in that mid tier at 6,900. I don't know if I want to go to any of these other options in the 6K range, like Tobias Harris, Harrison Barnes, Covington, Wiggins. Don't know if I want to be on these guys. I think the guy in the 6K range you want to go to is TJ Warren. Uh, so looking 6K and under for options that we can target as small forward. I've talked about some options here like Tarion Prince, JJ Redick, Bazemore. I think these guys are good options. Uh, Kyle's Kyle Kuzma at 5,300. I think it's a good play today. A uh, really good price tag on Kyle Kuzma. He's pretty cheap at this price tag. We're going to need about 26 DK points from him to return value. Uh, and in his last four games, aside from that game against Philly where he only played 19 minutes and put up seven DraftKings points, uh, he's put up 29 against Denver, 43 against Houston, 36 DK points against Charlotte. Uh, and in those, in those games, 27, 28, 32 minutes. Uh, so I do like this spot for Kyle Kuzma as a sort of a mid-tier cheap option at small forward. I think he makes plenty of sense today um, at 5,300. And then looking for value, 5K and under at small forward, options that we can target here. I don't like a lot of the cheap options here. Just a lot of these guys are so inconsistent or they just don't have like a really high ceiling. Like Larry Nance Jr., always a guy we can consider for tournaments, but he's just been so inconsistent that I don't know if I want to go there. Uh, like Wilson Chandler's been inconsistent. I think Trey Lyles at 4,300 could be an interesting play. Uh, I know he's been playing really well uh, just out in his last few games with Jokic out. Has a couple of double-doubles in there. 34 DraftKings points the other day against Indiana, 35 against the Pelicans. The minutes have actually been pretty consistent uh, for Trey Lyles lately, 27, 22, 26 minutes in his last three games. So I think he does make sense as a value option today at 4,300. If you do need to go that cheap at small forward or power forward, I think he would be a guy I would target. Uh, but yeah, guys, what I'm seeing is small forward today. Not a lot of value here that I like. I think this is another position you go to the mid-tier or you just pay up for LeBron if you can get up to him. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and move on to power forward. All right, so at power forward today, I don't really like a lot of the expensive options here. I think Porzingis in tournaments makes plenty of sense going up against the Lakers. But for cash games at 8,500, Porzingis has kind of been up and down lately. I don't think it's, I can't reasonably reasonably project Porzingis for like 45 DK points, which is what we're going to need from him in cash to return value on the salary. Obviously, Porzingis has the upside to put up like 50, 60 in this spot. But I don't think I want to pay up for him. Not going to be paying up for Aldridge now that Kawhi's back. Kevin Love, we don't know if he's going to play. I'm recording this Monday night. We don't have news on him, so I don't know if we can really uh, talk much about him. In this 7K range, we got Zach Randolph here, who's just been playing insanely well lately, but he's up to 7,100. I don't know if I want to play Zach Randolph when he's 7,100, even though he's been crushing lately, and it is a really good matchup against the Suns. I don't know if I want to pay that much for him, especially if Colley Stein comes back. We're not sure on Colley Stein. I believe he is questionable for today. If Colley Stein comes back, that's obviously a big uh, downgrade for Randolph. Definitely won't be playing him if WCS comes back, but if WCS sits again, could be a play even though he's really expensive. Randolph has been playing really well lately. And then looking for other options in this mid-tier that we can target at power forward. At 5,500, we do have a good play here in my opinion. Uh, John Collins is right now, as I'm recording this video, is questionable. If John Collins plays today, I think he's a good mid-tier option at 5,500, especially with Muscala and uh, Dwayne Demon still out. Collins is going to play a ton of minutes. Not sure if he'll be on a minutes restriction coming back from injury. But if he does play, good spot for John Collins. Definitely like him as a mid-tier option at power forward. Uh, 5,500, he does really catch my eye today. And then looking for some value plays that we can target at power forward. If we want to attack the Suns bigs today, I think we definitely want to go to them. They're in a good matchup against Sacramento. It's just who's, who's going to be the one that does all the production, whether it be Monroe, Lynn, or Tyson Chandler, who we'll talk about at center. I think it's probably going to be Chandler because Chandler's been getting most of the minutes lately. Uh, and he's been getting the start as well. So I think he's the Suns bigs that I want to target. So I doubt I'm going to be on Lynn, uh, Lynn or Monroe today. I feel like Mason Plumley could be an interesting power forward slash center option uh, for 4500 if we need to go cheap at value or we need to go for some value at this position. The Nuggets are going to be going up against the Pistons. We know the Pistons have Andre Drummond, a big guy with size. Uh, so they're going to need a guy like Plumley or Kenneth Fareed, if you want to target him for value, I think he makes sense today. One of these guys is going to have to uh, guard Andre Drummond. And when Plumley gets minutes, the guy produces for you when it comes to fantasy. He put up 25 DK points in their last game, and he only played 21 minutes. So one of these guys is going to have to guard Drummond. It could definitely be Plumley. He did start on Friday uh, against the Magic over Fareed. Plumley got the start over Fareed, and he played uh, 18 minutes in that game. The minutes are definitely inconsistent for Plumley, so I'd say he's more of a tournament play. Uh, but somebody's going to have to guard Drummond. It might be Plumley. Plumley might play 25 minutes and could put up 30 DraftKings points. The guy does have a ton of upside. Will do a ton when he's on the court. Uh, so I think he makes sense as a value option today. You got Trey Lyles here as well. Could be a value option at 4,300. 
Uh, at that same price tag, we do have Trevor Booker, interesting value play uh, with Joel Embiid questionable as I'm recording this video on Monday night. Trevor Booker could be looking at some really nice minutes with Joel Embiid out. I know Embiid's been out in their last two games. Um, Booker's played 20 and 25 minutes, put up 26 and 30 drafting points. So if Joel Embiid is out today, I think he makes sense as a great value option today at either power forward or center. I think if I'm getting exposure to the Philly bigs with Embiid out, I don't think I'm going to go to a Holmes or Amir Johnson. I think Trevor Booker is the guy I want. Uh, so definitely a good play in my opinion today if we need to go cheap at power forward or center. Uh, but yeah, guys, what I'm seeing at this position, let's go ahead and move on to center. All right, so at center today, we do have an option up here. We're obviously going to want to consider Joel Embiid. Right now, as I'm recording this video, like I said earlier, he's questionable. Uh, but he's in a really good matchup today, going up against the Timberwolves, going up against Carl Anthony Towns, who is not a very good defender. I feel like this is a, a smash spot for Joel Embiid if he plays. This is one of the later games on the slate. I believe it's like the last game on the slate, maybe. Uh, so I doubt we'll have news if Embiid's going to play before lock. So you're definitely probably taking a risk if you roll the dice with Embiid. But you never know. Maybe we'll get news throughout the day if Embiid's going to play or not. And if we do get that news before lock, then you can definitely go to him, in my opinion. Great matchup against the Timberwolves, against a bad defender like Cat. This is a spot where I feel like Embiid can go for 60-plus. So he is a guy we'll be considering in tournaments. Won't be going there in cash games. If he's out and we get that news before lock, then that obviously opens up Trevor Booker, even Johnson or Rashawn Holmes. That opens up uh, them as value plays at this position. But talking about Embiid, if he plays, great tournament option to pay up for today, in my opinion. And then looking for other options at center, if you're not going to pay up for Embiid, I think Carl Anthony Towns could definitely be a good tournament option as well today at 8,700, especially if Joel Embiid misses. Uh, that would be a great matchup for Cat if he doesn't have to go up against Embiid. And Cat has been playing really well lately in his last two games, uh, putting up 53 and 54 DraftKings points. Uh, 28 points and 12 rebounds against Dallas, 21 points, 12 rebounds against the Clippers. Cat's just been playing really well lately, and if it, if Embiid's going to be out and he's not going to have to go up against Embiid, really good matchup for Cat, definitely a center option I think we can pay up for if we do want to pay up at this position. I prefer him over Drummond and Porzingis today uh, if I'm going to pay up to the top at this position. And then looking for other center options that we can target, I've already talked about a lot of these options at the mid-tier, uh, so maybe looking for value plays at center. There is a center here in this 5K range. It's in a really good spot today. Uh, we're definitely rolling the dice, but Martian Gortat, I've talked about this guy a ton this year at 5,200. The minutes have actually been really consistent for Gortat lately, but they just haven't been very high. If you look in his last four games, the minutes have been consistent, 24, 23, 23, and 24, so we can reasonably project Gortat for about 23, 24 minutes. And if you think he can get 25 to 30 DraftKings points in that, in that amount of minutes versus the Nets, Obviously, we know the Nets are a bad defensive team. They play at a very fast pace. They're not good defensively against the center. Gortat could be sort of a, a mid-tier sort of value play we want to go to today at 5,200 at center. I think he makes some sense in a great matchup. And then, like I said earlier with the Suns bigs, I think I'm going to Tyson Chandler if I'm getting exposure to the Suns bigs today. They are in a great matchup against the Kings. The Kings don't fend the center position very well. Uh, and Chandler's minutes have been really consistent lately when he has played. 28, 20, or 28, 37, 26 minutes in the last three games that he has started and played. 42, 37, 15 drafting points. Uh, so as long as we get news that Chandler's going to start, I think he's the center we want to go to. Or I think he's the Suns big we want to target today. Uh, I think he makes sense as a value option at center at 4,500. And then one more cheap option I want to talk about at center um, is at 4,200. Jaleel Okafor making his debut, I believe, for the Nets today. This is definitely an option that we're going to have to target throughout the day because we don't really know what Okafor's minutes are going to be. I know he hasn't played like a basketball game in a while. If you read right here, it says that he has sat out his last 14 games with the Sixers. Uh, so he hasn't played an actual basketball game in a while. But if we get news that Okafor is going to play like 25 minutes, he could be a potential value option at center at 4,200. Uh, Okafor is a guy that when he gets minutes, he will produce. You just saw it to begin the year. Uh, 22 minutes against Toronto, 24 drafting points. Okafor is going to score and grab rebounds when he's on the court. So as long as he gets 20 to 25 minutes, he could put up 20 to 25 DraftKings points, which obviously is good value at 4,200. Uh, so definitely like J Jaleel Okafor making his debut for the Nets, to the, uh, Nets today. I think he does make sense as a value option at 4,200 if we get some news about his minutes. Uh, but yeah, guys, what I'm seeing at center today, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you drop a like on the video and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you turn on notifications so that way you'll never miss out on any of my new videos. And yeah, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck tonight, guys. Peace. Whoa. Whoa.